Yep. Uh, we kind of heard what SVSU likes in you. Mm -hmm. What do you like and what drew you to SVSU? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> One of the things that, you know, uh, was a, uh, a Division II school for seven years, two years at North Dakota State before they made the move to Division I, and five years at Northern State, um, they were in the Northern Sun. And uh, as you said in the, in the interview process of the search committee, you know, at the end of the day, there was always just something when you're sitting there something kind of missing inside. Uh, all the places of Colorado State, Utah, they were all great. Great people, um, good kids, and you could work there for a long time. But at the end of the day, there was something missing. And I think when we came here to interview and you were on this campus, it all started kind of filling in for us. And that was the chance to impact kids in a lot more aspects that uh, maybe a bigger university gets a little bit more individualized with. And here we can be more hands-on academics, basketball, life, and things like that a little bit more. I think that was part of it. Then in comparing this university's campus, the area, to the Division II school that, that we've been at, um, the facilities and everything that is put in place here in the, in, the, in, the pa in the past 15 years, 10 years, five years, by the president and, and Mike and everybody is second to none. I mean, we've got a great, we got great gym facilities. We got volleyball over here's got a facility we can practice in that. You know, you share facility. I mean, that's just in Division Two. That's unheard of. And, and and then you have a campus that's this nice to get kids to. And I, I truly believe driving up here for me, and my perception. We were just talking about it in the hallway. Is on your way up here, you get on campus, and you're like, oh, you're you're pleasantly surprised. And I think that's going to be a big thing when we get kids up here um, it is people that maybe have not heard of SVSU yet or have not been this way yet when they get here and see the campus and the facilities I think it could be a great thing they'll, they'll be pleasantly surprised and, and uh, I think we can get it going in a good direction yep and you, your whole coaching career has been so far away from you I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you knew anyone on the search committee or at the school before this how did you kind of feel about the opportunity when you come to apply to this you know uh, it, I think it's like any job when you, you kind of have a, a gut feeling, you're like, okay, I think I'm, I'm ready for a challenge of wanting to go after and, and be a head coach. Uh, you see an opening, um, then you start researching people and say, okay, do I know anybody there, or whatever, and, and didn't really know anybody here uh, per se. Um, I placed a phone call with Jamie, the women's coach, and just kind of started asking her questions and things like that, and we had a, a, a kind of a co-mentor or someone that we both have someone I've worked with and someone that she has studied with in Don Meyer. And so you started sharing philosophies and stuff and we kind of hit it off um, uh, in that phone conversation and then she just started talking about all the positives that are going on here. And then once you got here, uh, what she said was true. And so that kind of kind of made it uh, something where when you left here, like, man, I hope this can work out because I think it could be something special. You talked about exploring kids here. What are the challenges of recruiting in an area that you really don't have? Yeah, well, one is going to be work. We've got to work. We've got to get off campus. We've got to get to gyms. We've got to get on the phone. We've got to meet high school coaches. We've got to meet the AU coaches. Um, and so that's going to be the first thing, work. I don't think it, having someone from the area obviously helps and it, and it gets the ball rolling a little, maybe a little quicker, but there's no replacement for hard work. So that'll be first. Uh, secondly, I think um, trying to put together a staff of, of someone from the area I think is important but uh, again like we talked to these guys they asked about the staff too you know and, and we said yeah we want to get someone from Michigan if it's the right person but it's got to be the right person first um, and then we'll worry about where they're from. So, yep. How do you feel your experience in the NBA translates uh, and would help you with this position? Okay um, I didn't have any experience in the NBA Coach Kristoviak from Utah, my boss at Utah, he played in the NBA and coached in the NBA. Um, experience in working experience with experience working, being working with him. Utah. Yes, correct. Yes, um, experience working with Coach Kristoviak, um, I think reiterated the fact that you can be at a large university, a, a Pac-12 program like that, and and still hold the values that are true to what we want to do here. 
you know, and, uh, and that's kids will go into class, the culture of a program, trying to do things the right way. So um, I think that was kind of reiterating those feelings inside that, hey, this, this can be done. Um, and then, you know, he's a guy too that, you know, he wasn't per se from the Utah area, but he works. He works really hard and he's got that thing going in the right direction. So, um, and then probably just the teaching aspect, learning how to deal with different kinds of people because he's got great experience from playing with a lot of different personalities and coaching a lot of different personalities. So watching him teach different personalities and how he adapts to them, um, I think was really, really important and really valuable for me. Speaking of coaches you worked under, can you talk a little bit about what you learned from Don Meyer and just him being just an iconic coach at this level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's uh, five years with him. Uh, that was pretty special. The last year was probably the toughest um, with Coach and probably the greatest learning experience, uh, him at the accident and then the cancer. And I apologize for being a little emotional on that one. Um, that was probably the greatest learning experience of getting thrown in the fire right away when you didn't know for sure if you were ready, but you didn't have a choice. And uh, so there's always a special bond with him um, because we went through so much. And uh, other than my own dad, he's, uh, he's right there with him. Yeah, no question. Did you kind of take over head coaching? Duties yeah, or, uh, yeah, that was a, it was a, a great year, but a really challenging year. Um, when you're dealing with something like that, you got a guy that's, that I, you know, done everything he's done, and you're looking at all those kids who've come there for him, and uh, to be thrown in that fire, whether you're ready or you're not, you know, kind of deal is kind of neat, um, but yes, it also uh, prepares you for this opportunity too, you know, so helps you feel more confident that the way that season went, which was successful, um, and, and keeping the program going in the right direction, uh, helps you get ready for this one. What kind of communication have you had with the returning players, and uh, what do you know about these guys? Yeah, well, we, we uh, once we accepted the job and everything got finalized, uh, we were able to reach out by phone and talk to them. Uh, Chris was on the committee, so that helped a lot in getting to know him and trying to get a little bit of a feel for the program and, and talking to him more. But been able to talk to the phone, every one of them. We got a couple guys that aren't here today. Otherwise, we pretty much have everybody here. We spent about an hour, hour and a half together this afternoon um, just getting to know each other. Um, not seen any of them play yet, um, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, they're going to do that. We'll try and get up and down a little bit this afternoon, and then uh, uh, we're going to spend some time this evening having a, a bite to eat. So it's going to be a learning curve. I, I mean, that's just there's just no other way to put it. Uh, they don't know any about me, and I don't know any about them. So we're just going to take this a day at a time and and keep pegging away at it. And I think it'll go in a good a good direction. I think they know we want to be positive, and we're going to try and build a team first, and then the other things will. Uh, start working off of that. What, what can you guys do at this point? What, can you watch them practice? Can you can formal practices? No, training? no, you can't do anything like that. No, they're just going to go up and down this afternoon a little bit and uh, um, get to know each other, hang out with each other a little bit. We're going to have a bite to eat tonight, and uh, that's that's all we can do in the summer when they're not in class. So it's a little bit of a challenge that time of year. Right. If it was about a week or so earlier uh, before finals, maybe we could do a little bit more. but. So it's going to be a learning curve. Hopefully get some of the guys to work as much camp as we can this summer and uh, see them work with some kids and teach a little bit. So that'll be fun. Anybody else? Good? Thank Still you guys available all. after, right? Yeah, what's that? Okay. You're available after, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. absolutely. Whatever you need. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you.